This is the first in a series of training videos on the rail tools inside 12D. First of all, where do the tools live? You go up to design, track, you then have a sub menu there of track tools, which I'll pull up there. Also, there are some um, options on plotting and on labeling. We can get the same options from the view toolbars. We type TR, it'll take you down to track tick the track option down there, finish on that panel, and I'm going to grab the toolbar and just put it up in the top of my screen up here. Now I've already loaded my data in, so you can see that I've got a general set of data in here with typical topo survey, and included in that I have got my rails running along here, so the two internal grey strings are the rails themselves. Then I've got the bottom of ballast on the left, top of ballast on the left, top of ballast on the right, bottom of ballast on the right, and as you can see the changes are increasing from left to right, so that is the direction of our rail line. I now go across to a separate view here where I've just purely got the, the rails themselves and the changes in there. If I then go and toggle on the vertices for this view, you'll notice that we've got these vertices coming in and the survey along this set of rails has been picked up at approximately 20 meter centers and we then have a series of cords that are positioning the left and right rails and what we're going to try and do now is to go and calculate the center line of those rails. So to do that we're going to use the calc center line which is an option either here on the pull down menu or alternatively if you go to your toolbar for the track stuff it is here Here's the tool panel. Come up into here. In this case, we're going to choose the left string, which of course is going to be the upper of the two strings here, as in the changes are increasing from left to right. So I'll go and pick that, select the string, go and pick the right rail string, select that. In this particular case, both of those strings have got the same name, so that's not a problem. It'll see its way around that. We're then going to be producing um, a few models here, which are going to have the model for the centerline points. That's going to be a string which calculates the center of down each of the half distance between the two points. I'm going to change the name from track. I'm going to put this in as main line centerline. I'm then going to go and do a copy and paste of that from there, put it down into the DTM, so it's going to create a digital terrain model based on our points. The track left rail, what that will be doing is that will be giving us some cross sections cut off the level of the left rail points, and then the track right rail, which again we're changing to the, the main line, that'll give us a series of, of sections cut off the height of the right rail. That means that as we're going around corners and can comes into play, we will have a, a variation in the height of those cross sections. We're then going to go and hit the process button down here. If I then go and add my four new models on in here, you can see them sitting up there. I'm for the time being only going to go and put my main line on. You can see that's now gone and taken the center of each of those points. I then go and add on the left rail cut. There are a series of red cross sections. Notice that the cross sections aren't cut perpendicular to the center line, but they are cut through the nearest adjacent points here, so they are skewed relative to the points that were picked up. And then, of course, if I go and put on my right rail cut, we then get some blue strings which sit over the top of or underneath depending upon which was the high high track and which was the low track of the two of them. So now that we've got those and our digital terrain model in there, those are basically just cuts through there which we can use a DTM later on. So now that we've got our center line in there, what we're going to do is we're going to go and rationalize that by using a tool that is not actually part of the track set. What we're going to be using linear regressions and arc regressions to go and produce points that will give us a bit line of best fit or arc of best fit through our chosen points. Now, of course, if you had the design data for that particular track, 
then you wouldn't have bothered going through probably doing the center line um, string that we've just produced down here or alternatively you wouldn't bother doing the linear regression that we're about to do and arc regression because you would just use that original base data to produce it. So these tools really are to reproduce a railway line over an existing set of survey. Now the regressions that we're going to do with our track here are going to be linear and arc. But the important thing to understand about them is that they are going to be done as partial regressions. So if we go to strings, utilities, go down to linear regression here. We do have the three different types, linear, circle and arc. We'll start off with the linear option. And what we're going to do is we're going to go and pick on this partial button down here. I'm going to fill in the panel and then we'll go and have a quick look at something else. So the name that I'm going to put in here for the new regressed string is going to be straight number one. We'll put into a model called regression strings. And I'm going to go and give it a color. We'll use magenta nice and bright and stands out on the screen well for us. And then if I give it a report file, basically what that'll do is it'll come back and give me the amount of um, deviation that we had from the string. I'm not going to bother using it in this particular case. But what I wanted to show you is that because we're using partial regressions, it's very important where we pick the points that we want to do regression through. So let's just have a look at this. What I've got here is a bit of the uh, track training notes just showing the poor example of a selection for straights in a particular case here. You can see that if I go and pick a point up here as my first point on the regression and then a point down here on the straight for my end of regression, because we're starting off in an arc, the line that we're going to get is actually not going to be a very good fit at all. So that's a very poor selection of, of the points. Whereas down here, what we actually have is we have got a point at the start here, which is on the straight, and a point at the end, which is on the straight, and we get a very good regression. So always pick points shorter and make sure you get them truly on the straight rather than partially into a transition. So now we'll actually go and pick the points we want to put our straight or linear regression through. You'll notice that we need to be careful in that we've got a transition coming in here so there's a slight bit of curvature there and up the top here as well we've got the same thing we've got a transition there so there's a bit of curvature. So we're going to go in and start picking the points. So we come down here we pick on the pick button here and if you have a look down here just below my um, option down here it's asking me to go and the first pick I do is actually to say right I have chosen the line that I worked on and you'll notice that the, the um, prompt area is now saying pick the first point. So be aware the first point is to select the string you want to work on. The second point is going to be the first point you want to pick as part of your regression. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go and pick this point here which is at around about uh, 4200 and something. And then I'm coming up here to this point up just short of the 4240. I'll pick that point in there. Then having that's three picks I've made now for that. Regression, go and add my new model, which is the regression strings. And you can see it's gone and put in a little regression string in there for me. So now we're going to go and do a an arc Regression. Of course, you go through and probably do all your straights first and figure out where they are and then come back and look at your arc regressions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come up, I'm going to go and change this and say we're going to use an arc. That'll give us a partial arc, whereas a circle will fill the whole circle in. So in here, we're going to call this arc number one. We'll still keep it in our regression strings. I might decide to go and change the color and what I quite commonly do is if I've got compound curves so one's going to follow on from another then I will change the color of each of those curves as they go through there. So looking at this we've got a curve coming in here and there's going to be a um, transition somewhere in here as well. 
So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go and choose the pick button. Remember the first pick is to go and select the string that I want to work on. So I go and pick my center line string there. It's now saying where's my first clip point. So I'm going to go and pick the point at the very start of the arc. And then I'm going to come around to this point here which is around about uh, 4110. That I believe is still quite safely on the curve. In other words, not into the, into the transition. Hit regression on that. And what that's done is that's gone and produced a string that looks like that. I can then say that I want to keep it that long. I can go and edit the string itself. I can go choose the extend option, pick that point there, drag it back if I want to make it shorter or longer. If it had produced the wrong part of the curve for me, for instance, on the site here, it might have gone and done the lower portion. I could use the same option there. Just do a save and quit on that. And that's produced my first arc regression string. So as I said, you'd work your way through the job producing each of the straights and arcs, and then would come back in and build the alignment with element design. For this sort of work, it would be just about impossible to use IP-based design because we have compound curves, which are a nightmare to try and work out in IPs. Therefore, it would definitely have to be the element-based design that we would use.